All righty, welcome back. I like uh, some guy, I think uh, Luke Doolin uh, on uh, on Twitter tells me, coward, and I was talking about Mike Fires. He goes, in 10 years, we'll be talking about how he saved baseball. There's no saving baseball. Baseball's dying. I... I I, I, I'm I'm sorry for you seam heads out there. Okay, I like baseball too. I love baseball actually, but I gotta be honest. I I I have the pulse of what people like to talk about. Okay, it's like I know on all of these things. I know what they want to talk about. And baseball is sold down the totem pole. MLS soccer. When we get into the 30s, okay, we're it's 2020 now. When we get to 2030, in that decade coming up, the MLS will be ahead of Major League Baseball. Mark my words, you'll see. Next 10 years, that sport, okay, the sport already, I'm sorry, the sport has already exploded and it's all over. Kids already like soccer more than baseball as it is. I don't know if you know that, but I'm just enlightening you a little bit. Kids now, kids, okay, 25 and under, they'll watch a soccer game over a baseball game every day of the week and twice on Sundays. So I'm not sure you know what you're talking about because what you don't realize is baseball's not building new fans. They're living off the old ones like me, and we're dying. But you go ahead and you go ahead and think whatever whatever you want if uh, if you want to uh, go for it now. Speaking of baseball, let's talk a little bit about it because yesterday the players from the Dodgers came out and addressed the cheating scandal. Yesterday, we played you Mike Fire's comments, which he's a freaking coward because he's the guy that started all of this. And now when you ask him the question, oh, I don't want to be a distraction to my team. Well, you already are, dude. You created a distraction for the entire sport. Nobody cares about the sport already as it is. All they're going to do is talk about your scandal. Nobody's going to care about the game. They're going to talk about your scandal. But whatever. First, let's go with Dave Roberts, the manager of the Dodgers. And he was asked about the cheating scandal. And if he's mad about it, let's see what Dave Roberts had to say. Go ahead. You know, I I think that first off, I, I think that what went down as far as you know, what the commissioner uh, decided to do as far as penalty, uh, we completely support it. Um, but as far as kind of the direct impact, um, you know, of 17 of the World Series, it, it's it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. I think that, uh, you know, this could be a conversation I can go on for quite some time. But I think, uh, you know, my demeanor, um, it, it's really frustrating. You look at what could have happened. And um, I can't go too much into it, uh, Plast, but, you know, speaking for the players, um, the fans, and, um, you know, it was quite a season. What could have been different? Uh, But really, for me, it it kind of goes out to, you know, some unfair criticism that guys like Clayton took, um, you and um, Kenley, and... I guess frustrating is probably the floor but um, of my emotions, but that's kind of where I'm at. Well, there's Dave Roberts, and, you know, the part where he says, uh, I can't get too much into it, why? Is there a secret memo out there from baseball to try to keep it to a minimum? Because you have to address some of it, I guess. It all depends. If you're Mike Fires, you don't want to address anything. If you're an Astros player outside of Dallas Keuchel, you don't want to address it. And and we played yesterday Fires, you know, his cowardly statement. And uh, and we played also uh, Dallas Keuchel apologizing. Well, let's hear from Ross Stripling, obviously. Uh, Here's a guy that, you know, he's on that mound. And this is something that affected him in a big-time way. I'm out there to to be prepared and to make it to where you have no idea what's coming. And now all of a sudden you take that away from me. That is literally my job. And you've now taken that away from me. And now you have the best players in the world at what they do, knowing exactly what's coming ahead of time. 
and possibly knowing what side of the plate it's coming and all sorts of things. And it, it's, it is absolutely game changing. I don't know how else to say it. Listen, again, I'll tell you, because I've heard people actually say, well, you still have to hit the ball. It's not that much of an advantage. It's a huge advantage. It's an enormous advantage for those guys. Again, not for you or me, okay? Because they can tell me it's a curveball on the left side of the plate, and I will have no shot at hitting it anyway. They can tell me it's a fastball, a, a high fastball, and I'm going to strike out. They can tell me it's a low fastball, low inside, low outside. I'll miss anyway. But that's me. That's you. These guys, oh, man, are you kidding me? The eyes, the reflexes that these pros have, come on, man. It's a huge advantage. And if you're a pitcher like Ross, you have to feel – so like it's not just cheated it, it's it's almost like you were you you were they they made a mockery of you they they just like crapped all over what you do for a living and they just laughed at you basically it, it, it's it's a bigger extreme than cheating it's it's just so much more insulting on so many levels to guys like that because man you work so, it's 162 games dude and then it's all those playoff games and by the way didn't that world series last to seven games if i'm correct oh uh, yes it did you know what the splits are home and road home they were eight and one road they were three and six batting average 273 to 208 uh, a strikeout percentage, 15% at home, 23% on the road. Runs per game, 5.7 to 3.0. I mean, the splits were enormous. And now, I don't know how the postseason splits for every other team was, but I'm sure it wasn't this. Dif the difference between this, it could not have been the same. It had to have been a lot tighter. That's bad, dude. It's bad. Bad. Here's Justin Turner, and he's basically being honest because he's saying what we all should be saying. Go ahead. We know how hard it is to win a World Series, um, you know, getting there back-to-back -back years and not being successful, and we know that it's something that you really have to earn, and with, you know, the commissioner's report and the evidence and what they had, it, it's, it's hard to... It's hard to feel like they earned it, and, and they earned the right to be called champions, which uh, is something that I think everyone in this game uh, holds pretty highly. I, I'm not going to look at them as champions. I'm going to look at them as cheaters. I mean, that's, that's the only way to look at the Astros, is as cheaters. And the fact that they have been running and hiding, you know, and not saying anything and not defending themselves, because... Uh, Listen, when you're innocent of something, you will stand on the highest mountain in the world and scream it at everybody and say, F you all, I didn't do this. I don't care what you people tell me. There's no proof I never did this. You, you, you will have incredible passion to prove your innocence. There's none. You got you. You even have Dallas Keiko apologizing. So here's Justin Turner following up, and for some people that want to strip the Astros of that championship and then give it to the Dodgers, Justin Turner, a Dodger, he he doesn't like that idea. There's been reports of the city council asking for for us to get a trophy. Uh, I don't think anyone in the organization wants that. Uh, we want to we want to be able to experience uh, those things. We want to be able to dogpile. We want to be able to pop the champagne in the clubhouse and and spray all you guys. And uh, we want to have our parade and we want to do it the right way. Uh, so I don't think anyone's asking for that trophy. I don't think anyone wants that trophy uh, by any means. But just not 100% sure if if uh, you know they. 
they should be called champions for the rest of their lives. Should they have to vacate the trophy, vacate the title, give the trophy back? Should they? Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? Um, again, it's just hard. I, we know how hard it is to win a championship, and, and it's something that you definitely have to earn. And uh, the evidence and, and the commissioner's report, it makes it hard to hard to believe that, that it was earned. Do you think the Astro players, some of them at least, are walking around a little frustrated nowadays? Or, or how about they'll be frustrated for the rest of their lives? Because everybody will walk up to me, hey, yeah, you guys cheated. Yeah, you guys cheated. And that's kind of going to be the attitude. And, and, and here's the other thing. If they never get back to another World Series again and win one, or, or get back or even win one, Either or, that it becomes that story gets magnified even more. Okay, I'm just telling you that that's what's going to end up happening. And this is look, I don't think any of us need to feel sorry for anybody on the Astros. They knew what they were doing, okay, and they continued to do it. They knew that they were getting an edge. And they didn't care. They didn't care that they were cheating the game, cheating themselves, cheating the other team. Because, like I just said, you've worked so hard through spring training, 20-something games, 30 games, whatever it is you play in spring training, and 162 more. Then the postseason, and you're going to cheat? I mean, it's a long road to get to the World Series, man. What do you think they should do, O? Um, to, to do it, obviously, you can't give it to the Dodgers. This, no, I, I just think you leave it the way it is. Um, because you let them have the, uh, you let them have the trophy. Well, it's not that. It's not that you let them have the trophy because they're going to have to carry it around with the stain anyway. So it doesn't matter. It's You think the damage has been done. Right. The damage is – it's kind of like O.J. O.J. didn't serve his sentence – but he's living a sentence for the rest of his life because most people will look at OJ and say, you're a scumbag, you're a murderer, you know, I don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. There's always going to be the idiots that want to take a picture with the moron, but whatever. But most of us, are we look at him as guilty. He knows we all look at him as guilty. Okay, he can act. Well, anybody how, in their right mind. Right, <laughs> right. And so he can act however he wants about it, whether he can act like it doesn't affect him but it's got to affect him to a certain degree that he knows that people are constantly looking at him going, there's the scumbag, there's the low life. And so the Astro players are now going to have to live with, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's the cheater. Yeah, yeah, those guys cheated. Those guys stole the signs. That's why they want it. So now whenever they have to address that championship, they will now address cheating with it every single time. That's your sentence. You know what I kind of like? The idea, like what they did with Reggie Bush and USC, right? Vacate and just it, take it, right? You don't. You're not the champion. There's no champion. Got no problem with that. If you want to do it, that's fine. But there, but the Astro players are now living with their own life sentence now. So okay. it has a tail. There's right. always going to be this. Now, if you talk champion, you're going to bring up cheating. That's it. That's it. They even, hold hands and they even walk their, together forever. Even their own fans. Are going to feel that way now? How you could they I mean? not? How could they not? You. It right. isn't like you only did this once, right? Right. You so, did it because it worked, and you did it again. Of course, that's why you're going to do things because they work and they give you an advantage. I, I eat Belichick. Right? Whether it's steroids, whatever you're going to do, you're going to do something because it gives you an advantage. You know what I mean? And that's why you do it because you see the difference. And you take the steroids because you know your reflexes are going to be better. Your vision's going to be better. You're going to hit the ball farther. You're going to recover faster. You're going to play better. You're not going to wear. Yeah, all of that. April to October, have nothing in the tank. Everything is going to be positive for you. And you see the difference in your body when you're on it and when you're not on it. And so you're going to do it because it gives you an advantage. And if you're scuffing the ball, you're doing it because you see that there's an advantage to it. And if Phil Necro has a file in his pocket... It's because he knows it gives him an advantage. 
And if you put cork in your bat, it's because you know it gives you an advantage. Oh, he was just doing that to show off at batting practice. Everybody does something <laughs> like that because it's an advantage. Clearly. When people start to argue with me or discuss with me that, no, well, you know, oh, steroids don't give you an advantage. Yes, they do. Now, is it the same as stealing signs? Probably not. Stealing signs is way better than steroids because steroids, you still have to hit the ball. The, the thing is, these kind of people can hit the ball. You oh. and I, we can shoot ourselves up and we can get nice and big and strong and fast and all that. And we'll go to the plate and we're going to strike out left and right. Because we're not a trained baseball player. No, we you, don't have the eye, the reflexes to be that. But when you are a trained baseball player, that can hit the baseball. Okay. And your strike and zone is only six yeah. inches instead of 20. Yeah. And that's why you take the steroids. Everything gives you an advantage. So don't give me this BS, you know, that it's not an advantage. That's why they did it. Uh, Enrique Hernandez. Here's another guy. He he was probably the most brutally honest guy out of all of them, okay? And he had no problem going after the Astros. What happened happened, man. Like, the situation sucks. Uh, punishments were, were given. Uh, players got immunity. They got away with it. And it is what it is, man. Like... I'm not really worried about, I'm not sitting at home thinking about like, oh man, they cheated us and this and that, you know, it's, it happened, it just, it happened. We had, you know, everybody warned, warned us, we had a feeling we were just, you know, there was no way around it and it wasn't meant to be, you know? Their players weren't necessarily uh, apologetic. Huh? Their players weren't necessarily apologetic coming off this, do you care, do you need that from them? Uh, An apology? Keiko apologized. Yeah. Oh, Keiko, none of their hitters, I guess. Keiko apologized. Does that mean something to you? I think it means more to the to the community, to the fans. Uh, you know, I'm I'm just a player. I'm involved. You know, uh, I think the fact that we got you could say cheated in the World Series. You know, whether you apologize or not, you know, it is what it is. I guess when you get suspended for when you when you the other way of cheating when you do steroids, you apologize, but. For whatever reason, since they, they were able to get away with it, they didn't have to apologize. I don't know. Maybe they're going to apologize in the future. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know enough about the investigation to comment about what the punishment should be. I just, you know, I just, like like I said, you know, it's, they cheated and they got away with it. And they got a ring out of it. So uh, I guess if, if nothing happened to them as players, good for them. But uh you know, I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna sit here and play commissioner and decide what the punishment should be. I'm just, you know, I'm just here. I'm just here answering questions about our team. And there you go, Enrique Hernandez, and you know, he was open about it, talking about how they cheated. And you know, it, it it's gotta be the worst feeling when you know that you've worked so hard to put yourself in this position, and somebody uses. A, a, a clear advantage to steal that opportunity from you. And listen, if they beat you fair and square, it's all good, man. I, th th no problem. I don't think any of us should ever get mad at that. You can be disappointed about losing, but you can, you can definitely be very mad if somebody cheated or lied. And that's exactly what these guys did. And, and, and they know, they see the, um, the immunity side of it, and that's got to rub all of these guys the wrong way. Now, on the flip side, that's the NFLPA fighting for you. So if you're a player and then you end up in a difficult situation, that, that same union that fought for the Astros is going to be fighting for you too. So it's kind of a – it's really a twisted situation because – the NFLPA is fighting for the rights of players that don't deserve to have that right. Yeah, because you cheated. You lied. You, you, de you, you defamed the game. Why should we reward you now? And the, this, may, this doesn't make the players' union look good in any way, shape, or form. Here is Justin Turner. We sh yesterday, we told you, well, we played it for you, Dallas Keuchel has been the only Astro that has apologized. 
Justin Turner had a really good point about that apology. Well, Dallas Keuchel didn't hit, so I don't think uh, I don't I don't really know uh, why he was the one apologizing. But um, you know, that's he's the first one that's mentioned anything like that. So um, I guess good for him. Anyway, there you go. That's um, <laughs> Dallas Keuchel didn't hit. He's right about that. He's a thousand percent right. Why should the pitchers for the Astros be be uh, apologizing? And da- Keuchel's on the white. I think the White Sox, if I'm correct. I think he signed a White Sox contract. And you're, you're talking about a guy that had nothing really to do with any of this. It's crazy. Yeah, because even with the pitchers coming about, you're not even wasting your time telling them the pitches either because they're not going to, they're like you and me, they're not going to hit it anyway. So that one doesn't matter. But with everybody else, they were kind of involved. I, I mean, well, actually, they wouldn't be able to because they would play only national when they were at the Dodgers, not at the Astros. So the pitchers weren't hitting at, at home. That's right. At all. So there were no, no signs to be stolen at that time. Interesting. I just, but that was a really good line by uh, Justin Turner. What, Ke- Keuchel didn't hit. What the hell is he apologizing about? <laughs> Shows you that some guys really do feel guilty because obviously he wasn't involved in it. I'm but telling he's involved you, because he's a teammate. I'm telling you because they now have that jail sentence for the rest of their lives now. They brought it on themselves, man. That's it. They're going to have Whatever to carry crap. that yes. around forever. Anybody that comes in their face, you, dude, you brought this on your own. Yeah, no, and not only that, you'll get, you'll get oh, championship, oh, yeah, cheating. That's right. Oh, championship, oh, cheating, yeah. Or just championship. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, you'll get the, and you'll get people commenting and saying cheaters and all that stuff. That's what you're going to have to look. Li- I'm sure Astros fans are getting that from their friends that are fans of other teams. And rightfully so. Right. Yes. Yes. And it's a shame because that championship meant a lot to an organization that was really bad for a long time and had bounced back. And, and it looked like it was obviously doing all the right things. And they were, at least when it comes to drafting, because they obviously picked a lot of really good players, and they were really aggressive in free agency to kind of, you know, that's what you oh, need in baseball. Two pitchers, those two pitchers they brought at the yeah. trade deadlines both years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's why, you know, that's what you need in baseball. You've got to be able to draft and develop, but then you're going to have to use some free agency to kind of, you know, get you over the top. And that's what they were able to do. You know something oh, legitimately on paper, man? They were probably the best team. Oh, yeah. And to have to resort to this and, right. and to have this asterisk now cheating, man. I, You know what? Why the hell didn't they put a little bit more thought into this? The, the ramifications, the repercussions, and how long, you know, it's going to be a stigma. You know? You, you, you're the best on paper, man. Yep. Go play the game. Yep, you're right. Uh, we are going to talk a little, uh, we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk a little Kansas City football. Bob Fesco from Sports Talk 610 in Kansas City will join us next. KC takes on the 49ers next week in the Super Bowl right here in Miami. We'll talk to Bob Fesco. We'll talk a little KC football next. All righty, we are back, and we're going to switch gears here. We're going to talk a little Super Bowl. It's in town. Bob Fesco will be covering Kansas City for 610, uh, for Sports Talk 610, or Sports Radio 610 there in Kansas City. You can follow him on Twitter at Bob Fesco. Bob, good afternoon, my friend. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing wonderful. I'm actually at a golf stream with a friend of mine who's got a horse running today, so we're getting ready to meet the horse and getting ready to meet the jockey before we uh, go see this horse race. Damn, dude. I wish. Well, we were at Hylia Park yesterday doing the show, so I could have uh, actually been wagering on that race a little bit since I was wagering on some of the tracks yesterday. So, damn. All right. What, what's the horse so we can keep up with it? What's the name? Well, what, what, what what's the horse name again? Starship? The one that's racing right now, Starship Taxi. Starship Taxi is race number seven 
in the uh, in the next race. So okay. we'll see what it does. All right, I was I was going to ask if he was a Jefferson Starship fan, and that's why he did it. But no, okay, now <laughs> Starship Taxi. That's a, that's a whole different ball game there. So so uh, yep. get, walk us uh, through it. Uh, what's the environment right now at Gulfstream? Oh, it's pretty good, man. Like I haven't been to a horse track in a long time. We don't have one in Kansas City anymore, so we had the opportunity to roll out here and see a race or two before we had the convention center and start, you know, covering football this afternoon. I love it. All right, good stuff there. All right, Bob. So I would imagine, Bob, the day that they drafted they drafted uh, Pat Mahomes, you said, "Oh, this guy's going to dominate the league and lead them to a Super Bowl in a couple years." Right? That the, the, this has gone exactly the way you imagined. <laughs> Well, no, not at all. I think, you know, Kansas City fans are so, you know, worried about the next shoe getting ready to drop, and everybody's wondering, oh, my God, is this going to be the right guy? Did they get the right guy? Did they get the right guy? And it clearly looks like they got the right guy. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even a, a, a debate who the right guy was, and this guy has clearly been the right guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it is um, – it's almost like – you, 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 it's almost like you, like, you remember the movie Weird Science where the yeah, two really. kids went in and they designed the woman and, and obviously she going, came out uh, and smoking hot Kelly up. LeBrock. Wait, hold on, we're over here. It's, Bob. it's almost like two guys that got together and designed the, the perfect quarterback and that's what this young man is. Well, there's no question he's the perfect quarterback and I think you're right about that. I mean, I think they did develop the perfect quarterback. I don't know how he got to us. But I guess it's all those years of absolutely, you know, being terrible at the quarterback position and using somebody else's, you know, garbage as our quarterback. We finally got the opportunity to not only get ours, but maybe the best of all time. I've never seen anybody better than this guy. Oh, yeah. No, it, well, you know, when people are saying that he moves like Elway and throws like Marino, uh, it, it's really hard to argue that one because he kind of looks like that combination, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm almost 43 years old. I've never seen anybody play the position like this in my entire life. I mean, and, and I don't think it's hyperbole either. I, I don't think it's hyperbole at all to say he's the best I've ever seen because I, I look at him every day and I go, my God, you do nothing wrong. You can beat people with your arm. You can beat people with your legs. You can beat people with your mind. I mean, he just absolutely knows how to destroy people. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right about it. See, that, that's where I have this discussion, this interesting discussion with some fans because I never buy the Lamar hype. I, I don't. I don't. I, I've never bought the Ryan Tannehill, uh, even when he did what he did this year. Uh, I don't buy Josh Allen because in the end, these guys are all dependent on a running game, and when it all breaks down, and there will be chaos in the NFL, your quarterback has to rise above that chaos and beat you with his arm. And those guys, when that chaos happens and you're going to depend on your arm, those guys will all struggle. Whereas this kid, this kid's going to beat you from the pocket or beat you with his legs, a lot like Russell Wilson does. Same thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's insane. And, and I think the reason he's able to do it is because he's so smart. I don't know that I've seen a quarterback as smart as him. I mean, Brett Favre had all the athletic ability in the world, but that guy would make mistakes. That guy would give yeah. games away. Yes. Patrick Mahomes doesn't give games away. He wins games for you. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't do stupid things out there on the field that's going to put you in a position where somebody else is going to have to pick up the slack. I mean, you, you mentioned, like, the perfect quarterback earlier, but he is because I think the perfect quarterback gives you the opportunity to win constantly, and Patrick does that. Yeah. Uh, now, let me ask you. I would imagine that it's, it's really all about Andy Reid here, right? Because for me personally, I'm rooting – I'm picking Kansas City because I like Kansas City in this game, but emotionally, man, we all know Andy Reid. It's kind of like our guy down here. We knew that Dan Marino only needed a championship to complete that resume, and that's exactly what's going on with Reid. That guy has given so much to football, has produced so much. I would imagine that a lot of people in, in Kansas City are, are hoping that, that he's able to complete that, that hardware finally. Well, I think people in Kansas City want it because it's been 50 years for us. But I think, yeah. I, I think if you're not a Chiefs fan or if you're not a 49er fan, you're rooting for Andy Reid in the NFL, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think everybody wants to see Andy have success because he's been around it for so long. He's been so close. Everybody genuinely likes Andy Reid. Like, I think everybody outside of San Francisco is pulling for the Chiefs and pulling for Andy Reid for that reason. Yeah. No, I, I well, I, I definitely am because I've always been an Andy Reid defender. You know, when people take shots, well, he can't win the big game and this and that. It's just so many things have to have fall. I mean, so are we, are we going to say that in Buffalo, 
they had a bad coach or that they had a, a, a quarterback that couldn't get it done or they didn't have a great defense. No, man, those guys, Marv Levy and those guys went to four straight Super Bowls. That was awesome. That was amazing. That doesn't mean that Marv Levy couldn't win the big game and that he's not a great coach. He's a phenomenal coach. But, you know, everything has to fall into place for you in order to win that big game. Well, it really does. I mean, it's so hard. And that's why I've been telling people all week, just enjoy – being here right now because it's been 50 years since we've been here don't stress about winning like we haven't even talked about the 49ers yet i mean we we used all of last week to enjoy the opportunity to be in the super bowl for the first time in our lifetimes and that's what last week was all about beginning you know tonight tomorrow whenever we you know do stuff it'll start looking forward to the opponent and seeing what they're all about but this for us this is this was the first time you know since since 19 whatever it was that we had an opportunity to play in the super bowl and i think everybody right now is just kind of enjoying this, and then once the week kind of kicks in, then we'll start to worry about the opponent a little bit more. I would imagine that Jones and Kelsey will be fine in this game, right? I, I, that, I mean, Jones played in the last game, so he, he came out of it pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's going to be fine. I mean, this, this, this week off, you know, is going to help everybody get back to where they need to be. Kelsey is a little bit bagged up. I mean, he had a reoccurring knee injury that translated into a hamstring injury that he suffered in that first playoff game tighten up on him a little bit, but I think he's going to be okay. I mean, it's the Super Bowl. If you if you aren't in a wheelchair or in a bed, you're playing in this football game. <laughs> I'm with you there. And by the way, we're talking with Bob Fesco uh, from Sports Radio 610 in Kansas City. You can follow him on Twitter at Bob Fesco. Bob, I am picking Kansas City. Let me give you my explanation because I know you're going to be kind of like a homer, okay, but I'm going to be objective here, all right? So here we yeah. go. All right, I like Kansas City because of what I saw in the in the Titans game. They got tough. They shut down Derrick Henry, and they said, all right, Ryan, you're going to have to beat us with, with your arm, and obviously he can't do those things. I think that is something that they can roll over to this next game. Jimmy's a much better quarterback than Ryan, but he still has not performed at the highest level the way you need to. But the fact that they were able to stop that Titans running game, that showed me a lot from Kansas City. And for me, since I'm going to make that investment, I have hope that Kansas City is going to shut down that San Francisco running game and put all the heat on Garoppolo. Do you agree or not? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, beating Derrick Henry was so big and holding him to 69 yards is so huge. And, you know, these defensive guys have been using kind of all along the, the monster that nobody believes in us, nobody thinks we're any good, and it's just kind of continued, you know, basically since midseason. And they went out there and they held, you know, Derrick Henry to 69 rushing yards. That's what they needed. There's no more question marks now about this defense. And I think that's how you win, you know, next week. You, you, you shut down the running game and try to make Jimmy Garoppolo and Emmanuel Sanders beat you. Yeah, I think so, because in the end, that's why I'm picking Kansas City, because I pick Mahomes over Garoppolo, and then – I'll say, okay, I got a wash in tight ends. Fine. But Tyreek Hill becomes the ultimate difference maker when it's all said and done because we have not met a cornerback that can stay with that guy. To me, this is why Kansas City ends up winning the defense and then Mahomes and Tyreek Hill. I like the fact that you said defense first. That makes me happy because I'm a defensive run the ball guy. You know, growing up in New Jersey watching, you know, Parcells and the Giants. I've always been a defensive run the ball guy, and that's what we're seeing with the with, with the Chiefs right now. They're playing great defense against the run. They're shutting down the run. They don't have much of a run game to speak of, but Patrick Mahomes knows how to run to break your back. Yes. And and I think Tyree Hill can be a big playmaker in this one. I mean, yeah, find me somebody who can cover him, you know? Yeah, no, nobody can cover that kid. There, no there's one. no doubt about that. All right, my brother. So uh you what 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 else do you have planned this week here in South Florida? You're already starting off with some gambling and horse racing. It doesn't get better than that. So what, what's what's on the agenda for Mr. Fesco for the rest of the week? You know, I wish I knew the answer to that question. This is the first time we have a team in the Super Bowl, so I imagine it's going to be different than other Super Bowls where you have, you know, C-listers on and go to media parties. So I, I don't know, but I am definitely going to enjoy this weather because we left the snow covered area to get down here this morning yeah you, you can't beat us in weather but we can't beat you in food outside the stadium so you know That's yeah, right. there's a give and take here we'll give you the weather but we're not going to have the barbecue you've been spoiled with uh over there in kansas city my brother that no, that we can't not at reach. all that that's right we're 
But we'll live it up, man. I'm happy to be here. It's exciting to be in Miami this week. A, a little Cuban, a little Cuban food, my brother. Enjoy some of you that. You gotta have some. All right, I will. Bob, you be good. Take care. Thank Thanks. you, my man. You got it. Bob Fesco from Sports Radio 610 in Kansas City. Somebody came by, said hi, gave me his uh, hand, shook his hand, but I have no idea. And like right in the middle of the broadcast, <laughs> just another friend, man. <laughs> like, uh, yes, I am. <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk to you because I'm in the middle of an interview here. But anyway, so um, that was good with Bob Fesco. And, and my man's already here plunging his guts out. That is awesome. I got to give you my basketball picks. I haven't made my basketball picks, which, by the way, yesterday we took a bath. I mean, we, like, were buried yesterday. One and four yesterday. We dropped to 58 and 61. <laughs> it was terrible, man. It was terrible. Anything and everything that could have gone wrong for me yesterday went wrong for me yesterday. <laughs> Straight up, man. As hard as as good as they are, basketball with fifty to seventy nice. possessions per team, that is so the the, the clinching proof yeah. that they are bad asses in Vegas. Amazing. Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, by the way, uh, at uh, two o'clock. Uh, we are going to talk to Mark Lillibridge, the former NFL player and scout and agent and contract negotiator. And the only thing he hasn't done is own, a, own an NFL team. Uh, so he'll join us at 2, and we'll go uh, over a couple of NFL subjects with him. Patricia Triana is going to join us. Uh, no, Trina. Trina, yes. Uh, Patricia Trina is going to join us uh, at 2.30. She's from GiantsCountry.com, which is part of Sports Illustrated. And she covers the Giants, obviously, on a, on a daily basis. Eli retired. So I want to kind of get her angle from all of this. And uh, Did I just I read think, that right? 20 years on that beat, man? Uh, who, Patricia? Yeah, yeah, she's been on the beat for wow. a long time. Yes. Wow. Yes. She has a podcast, too. She does a really good job with her podcast on the Giants. I think she does it every two weeks. I want to say, I think weekly during the show, during the season, maybe bi-weekly, off-season or something like that. So she does a really good job with that. Uh, so we'll have uh, Patricia on at 2.30 uh, to have a little fun with uh, with her and talk uh, a little Eli Manning. Un unadulterated Eli. That's what you get. Unadulterated Eli. That's how he did it yesterday. I just gave you unadulterated Eli. Never thought I would ever hear him say something that in that form, you know, in that style. All right, let's uh, give you our uh, NBA picks here. You know what? Let me check because before I uh, give you my picks, some of it might have changed uh, since I wrote it down this morning. So I want to make sure I have the Unadulterated right. Unadulterated Eli. Hey. There we go. There we go. It's hard to talk without a mic. All right, here we go. Uh, we uh, see. I knew it. Ch it would change. I knew it would change. Yeah, that 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 is playing some games with me here, man. All right, man. It, Vegas has got to keep their edge every minute by the minute. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Some of it is the same, and some of it is not. So I am going to fix this. As we uh, speak, and then I'll get back to uh, to the uh, spread on my own here. What is this? Is at uh, two forty? Yep, it's at uh, yeah two four two two forty one and a half now. Okay, wow, that's, that's a high over and under, man. Two forty one and a half. Holy crap! And the Hawks Wizards, man, that's a that's a that's a big one right there. All right. So what do we got here? Raptors, boom, Suns and Grizzlies. Hmm. All right, I'll, I will fix this during a break, and then what we'll do is I'll get back to uh, to uh, giving you my picks. They're I'll pissed. do it after Lillibridge is what I'll do. Vegas is pissed you got one win yesterday out of Fox. Yeah, no, I was. <laughs> That's why they did the switch up. Holy moly, dude. I had a terrible night last night, man. That was. Don't feel bad, man. Basketball is like I, I dude. You you hear me all say it all the time. It is the toughest, man. Yeah, hands no, down. But, hands I know, down. But but still, I I got to I got to do better than that. 
I got to bounce. And, and today is, is time to bounce back in a big time way. Let's change up on your numbers. They're not yes. even happy that you got the one win yesterday. Uh, man, I tell you, uh, that was uh, that was absolutely torturous uh, to to go through that yesterday. I, I kept losing and losing. I was like, oh man, I'm not going to see the light of day here in this one. I actually do have the picks already. You know that? I do have them now. Two thirty-one and a half. Okay. So you're so you're gonna punch this out here? Yeah, I think I can actually. I think I can you know, actually. We got do time. It now. We got like six minutes. Yeah, seven minutes. Yeah. Okay. I don't need that. I don't need that much time. So yeah. This can, platform's yours, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can. Uh, we can actually do it. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. Let's start off. Nuggets are minus three against the Rockets, and remember they're playing without Harden. Uh, over and under is two twenty-five and a half. I like Denver in this game. They are home. Rockets are the road team. No Harden. Give me the Nuggets minus three in this one. The over and under is two twenty-five and a half. Uh, it was two twenty-seven, so it came down a little bit, but it's still a little too high for me right now because I can't trust the Rockets when it comes to scoring. Raptors minus three at the Spurs. The over and under is two twenty-one and a half. Um, I actually like the Spurs in this one plus three. Uh, not that the Spurs are a great team, but they're a gritty team. I think they can actually even beat the Raptors, but if not, they'll keep it close. I, I think yesterday, I, one of the, I think the one game I won, I might have won by half a point, and there was another game that I lost by half a point. It is, uh, it is amazing. Hawks are favored by one against the Wizards. The over and under is 241 and a half, which is what I was telling you. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going Wizards here, man. I'm going to go plus one on the road with the Wizards. The Hawks are terrible. Uh, I, I just keep riding a, ba a going against a bad team. I've been winning more than losing, definitely, going against the Hawks. The uh, Grizzlies are favored by two and a half against the Suns. The over and under is 233 and a half. The over and under is a little too high for me. Uh, Grizzlies uh, giving the Suns two and a half. That's also... I'm not comfortable with that one. I'm going to have to stay away from that. Celtics are at the Pelicans. Celtics are favored by one. Uh, the over and under is 231 and a half. I like the Celtics on the road. I'm going to take them minus one. I know they've got the Brown injury, but I think they can overcome and beat the Pelicans minus one. Uh, Knicks are favored by one and a half against the Nets. Kyrie Irving went off yesterday. What do you have, like 40-something, almost 50 points? The best part about that game yesterday was that little girl that was a Kyrie Irving fan, and at the end of the game, he went, gave her the jersey, gave her a hug. She was crying her eyes out. I'm not a Kyrie fan, but I got to give him I got to give him a lot of love for that. That was really really cool. Whenever you can acknowledge the fans and the people that actually love you and support you and, and are always rooting for you, you 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 as an athlete should appreciate that man anybody that is supportive of you you got to be appreciative of that so that was major major props to Kyrie Irving on that one man I gotta I gotta give him a lot of respect but you know what I'm gonna go Kyrie Irving and the Nets and I'm gonna go plus one and a half against the uh, Knicks I'm gonna go with Brooklyn yo Brooklyn and then I'm gonna go over 223 and a half in this game, I like this game to be a very high-scoring affair between two teams that don't play good defense. Uh, Clippers are at the Magic. The A. Hey, Kawhi was at the uh, strip club, okay, getting his freak on with his New Balance hoodie. He's feeling good right now. I think maybe he comes back and plays. Magic, by the way, the over and under is 218.5. That's where I'm going in this game. I'm going over 218 and a half. Clippers and Magic. The Magic are actually playing decent basketball. I'm going to stay away from the point spread because the Clippers are on the road. They're going to strip clubs. I don't know. I'm not, yeah, yeah. I can see them getting, uh, you know, maybe winning this game, but maybe it might be like a little close. So I'm afraid of that. Magic are kind of gritty. I'm going to take the over 218 and a half. I think that's the better bet here. The uh, Pacers are at the Blazers. Blazers are favored by two. Uh, Pacers aren't, a, aren't the best road team, but I'm going to take them 
plus two because I just don't trust the Blazers. Don't know what the hell I'm going to get from them, but I know I'm going to get some hard play from the Pacers, even without, of course, uh, their best player who's been out all year. They'll eventually get him back. Blazers when, doing once, too much blazing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say that, uh, yeah, maybe Whiteside blazing a little too much uh, along with uh, Mello. So I'm going to go Blazers plus two. I can't trust Whiteside and the boys in that one. So I got Nuggets minus three. I got Spurs plus three. I got Wizards uh, plus uh, plus one. Okay. I've got Celtics minus one. I've got Nets plus one and a half over 223 and a half. I've got Pacers plus two. And I've got the over in the Clippers magic to 18 and a half. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bets today. We are doing in the association. We plan on bouncing back strong. So get on board. We're going to have like a six and two, seven and one, eight and oh night is what's going to happen tonight. Strong bounce back. Okay. Strong. You know what's hilarious that you said earlier that I just popped back in my head? Yes. Booger McFarlane. Lives in the land of fluff. Yes, he does. <laughs> He's so terrible, dude. So terrible, bro. He says nothing and goes out of his way to just say fluff for no reason at all. Well, you can tell his confidence because that's why he's going for the deep balls. Can you just say, well, he's really way off. He's not hitting anything. I loved when he goes... Uh, it's 30 seconds in on a minute, and he doesn't have any points. That's, te- so that, that's <laughs> Tessator doing that. Tessator was the only one that was calling it straight up. If you haven't heard Lamar, and and it, it, first of all, you can go to my my uh, Twitter page at Big O Show. I put it up there, the video. But you could go YouTube it, whatever, put Lamar Jackson a Pro Bowl, and then it'll come out. It's only like a minute long, and it's him doing, you know, trying to hit the targets. For those of us that are old, we remember Marino and all the guys doing that, right? And and so the, Lamar I, had to do it yesterday. I remember Marino. Oh, it was at the end, like once, whatever. And no, we're not going safe. We're going for the furthest and one. He hit it. And it had the little bullseye thing. And like, man, he couldn't have walked up and marked an X dead center. Yeah, that's 50 Marino. 50 yards or whatever the hell it was. That's Marino. It was like. Man, the guy, you don't even have to have a body. Yeah. Just give him some stupid bullseye cruising across the field. That's it. Marino, right now, right now, would embarrass Lamar Jackson in that game. Right now. Okay? Oh, and the number one and number two targets, Lamar can throw it this way. Marino will throw it o- o- over his shoulder. Over his back and his shoulder, more accurate than Lamar. He can't hit the the deep ones with that because he's not going to throw it that far. But the one and twos, I bet you Marino can hit can hit it the other way, not throwing it normal the other way, like I showed you before. I mean, that was embarrassing. Play play the audio. You got the audio. That audio is hilarious. Tessator is like, wow, this guy can't hit the side of a barn, pretty much. I mean, that's all he really needed to say. But when you hear, you got to see it. You have to watch it. He couldn't stand on the beach and throw a ball in the ocean. I don't think I've ever seen an NFL quarterback throw it that bad in in one of those contests. Because think about it. You're standing there. You've got no rush, no nothing. You should be able to hit all those targets dead on. When you feel like throwing it, you get to throw it. Yeah. It's like you get to, like, wait for when the pendulum is swinging so you can time it. Nothing, dude. My man couldn't hit the side. When he couldn't hit the close ones, that was bad. Okay? That was bad. Look, I'm always curious to see the strategy that guys go with here. Here we go. Passing. And you can see he wants the deep ball and those big points early on. Yeah, he's trying to hit those corner routes down there, those four pointers. Typically, guys want to start... With the one pointers, get some easy throws out of the That's way. That's right. Not Lamar, though. Ah. Coming up short on the bucket tosses. And then he goes for the short. metronome, that two target metronome. 
That cable line target for five points. So here he is a half minute into his one minute run and doesn't have a point. Zero. But you can tell the confidence that he has oh, yeah. because he's going for those deep ones. Maybe yeah. he's got to adjust the confidence. strategy a little bit. Finally, he breaks through with that four target windmill, but this is looking like a struggle for the guy who was the breakout star in the league this year, Lamar Jackson, off the rim of the two-pointer. Come on, Booger, more foot Not only was he the breakout star, he's going to be the presumptive MVP. There you go. Named it NFL Honors. Just a tremendous season by this young man. There you go. Final toss Bluff for Lamar McFarland. Jackson. It's off the mark again. Final off so not the, mark. the start he was hoping Just for. Just a bit outside. We, we, you know, we, we actually needed... For the call, we needed uh, Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre, bro. There's Lamar just a bit outside. There's Lamar going to target one just a bit outside. There's Lamar going deep to target number five just a bit outside. You know, that kind of stuff. He, nailed, he nailed the mascot. Did, didn't we just lose Euchre? I think he just, didn't he? No. Just, did I kill him? I thought we. Oh uh, man, don't. Yeah, I, I, I haven't. Did heard I kill? That. Did I kill Bob Euchre? Wait a minute. Uh, oh, did I kill? Bob, I, I I think Bob Euchre passed away. Are you away, are bro. you trying to pull a, a what was it? Abe Bogota? No, I think the guy Bob. from you remember Barney Miller? Yeah, the yeah, other, yeah. Of like course, they, Fish. Forever they were saying, you know, yeah, hey, pass away, pass away. The guy's like, I remember he did a people thing. Hey, I'm alive, by the way, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish was a uh, fish was alive. Alive and well, fish lasted for like 7,000 years, bro. You know? I think Bob Euchre is is just, I, I, why do I think he just passed away? I might be wrong. I hope not. I didn't hear anything on it. Um, he's funny, man. He, you guys he's 86. Wow. Or he was 86. Let me see. Yeah, because he played what, in the 50s, the 60s? That, yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, I, I, I think, I don't know why I, 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 I'm pulling it up now to see if he passed away, if I'm right. Let's see here, I'm on the Bob Euchre, uh, not that Wikipedia should be, you know, because Wikipedia could kill you off. No, it doesn't have him dead. Robert George Euchre is still alive. I'm sorry, Bob, I killed you off when I shouldn't have. Okay? His last appearance. Shame on you. His last appearance in a Major League Baseball game was September 29 of 1967. But God bless him. He's still alive, and he's 86 years old, born in 1934. That's pretty awesome. Funny guy, too, man. Funny guy. He made a, he made a nice career for himself. What do we have here on the YouTube we got, chat board? We actually, oh, we got to go. We, we got a go. break, and we, we got to go. get Bob on. Yes, let's do that. Um, uh, Mark Lillibridge is going to join us. Uh, we're going to uh, talk to the uh, linebacker, the uh, scout, the agent, the contract negotiator. Mark Lillibridge will join us next.